<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another fucking episode. What is this? Episode five, Planet Dumb. Um, Let's go. Check out the Patreon. Get your episodes a week early if you're into that. Uh, plus bonus content. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Planet Dumb. Um, yeah, what's up? How you how you feeling, buddy? <laughs> yeah, just the hangover episode. Yeah, we were out. We were out last night. The outdoor dining, <laughs> getting lit in the outdoor dining. Um, we had those like mai tai style drinks. They had like two shots in this shit. What's a mai tai? It's a fucking tropical drink. Mm, so it's like tea. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it was like I tiki guess, style. I guess I'm just gonna keep on this shitty John <laughs> damn show. It's a tea it's a tiki style drink. Boy, when you don't you know, I wanna I wanna tell the listeners, I don't know if there's any young listeners. <laughs> when you get to this age, you know, I don't really drink as much anymore. But when you do that shit fucks you up. <laughs> yeah, it like wrecks your whole fucking day. <laughs> yeah. I used to do this shit yeah, where in I'm, case you didn't realize drinking fucks you up. Yeah, I, I used to do this <laughs> shit where I would drink till like three or four in the morning and then just wake up at like eight. And and just be and straight. Just be, yeah, I know, right? just be straight. You could like completely black out and then just wake up like four hours later and, and be, be like, fine. Oh man, What's I'm kind of tired. Why is that? It's just like your body is your just body, slowly yeah. deteriorating. Your body can't. Time. I think your body probably has trouble like breaking down the alcohol and shit, metabolizing it as you grow older. That's why Gen Z hates us. Yeah. Is that what it is? Gen Z. Gen Z. What are Gen we? Z, Gen Z hates. They what hate, are we, millennials? They hate millennials. Every generation <laughs> hates the millennial. You know why? It's because Gen Z really cares about shit. And our generation was very nihilistic. Yeah. And we don't care about shit. You know what I mean? But like. That's probably why. But they're also. To, oh, Gen ahead. Z is also very mean, though. Yeah. They like bully people, I feel like. They've got a lot of weird shit going on. Like, um,. I, they discovered social justice, but it's like very tied into identity politics, like extremely tied into identity mm-hmm. politics. Yeah, and then um, I don't know. You know what it is? Is that they they were born in turmoil already, so it's yeah. like they're like we got to do something. Versus us, like we came out the '90s when shit was fucking sick. Yeah, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. shit. You could get a house. Shit was sick. As mad fuck. easy. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like Everything the 90s was like... were sick as fuck. And the, it, outside of like you know, like the early to mid nineties when there was like, but it, yeah, every city was like a shithole for a while, you know. Mm-hmm. But you know, as soon as we hit the two thousands, it was like nine eleven. Yeah, uh, Iraq War, Afghan War mm-hmm. for fucking like ten years, bro. I don't know. I mean, and then the economic down, crash is still happening. In yeah. A way. The first decade of like uh, my adulthood was straight up like, boom, fucking economic crash, mm-hmm. constant war. Yeah, it's like our life stability. We was started it? out Destabil- in like destabilization. Uh, we like started out on in like on a good path when we were kids, yeah. but then. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as we hit our teens, everything got fucked up. Oh yeah, everything got fucked, man. Yeah. For real. Do you know what's crazy, man? Is that like these kids, like Gen Z, mm-hmm. they don't know what it was like before 9-11. Like for real, 9-11 was like, it changed everything. You when know what is, I mean? When like way, we used to be able to just get on a fucking airplane without having to fucking get your check. Yeah, but get be, anything checked. Yeah. <laughs> beyond that, beyond that, we had privacy and all that uh-huh. shit. You know what I mean? It, there wasn't all this constant like police state surveillance, surveillance state. state. Yeah, and then and then there was like I don't know, man. It was like a, a different feeling before. It was like reality shifted. You know what I mean? After nine eleven, it was just like boom. Here's your new reality. Yeah, this is or right, this is. I mean, shit was fucked up already, but like, yeah, it was just like it was like behind a curtain. So you like oh, you yeah. weren't you weren't really aware of what was happening, and then that like how you're saying like. 9-11 happening kind of just like hit you in the face like there's no yeah there's no sweeping that under the rug dude that shit was crazy uh-huh. that that shit was yeah. fucking i don't know why we started off the podcast talking about 9-11 but that's cool because i was talking about like millennials like, yeah millennials gen yeah. Z and whatnot gen z is cool i fuck with gen z they care about shit like i don't know man i used to i used yeah. to care about shit mm-hmm. when i was young kind of but 
The thing yeah, is, that's probably why they hate. Yeah, they hate my nihilistic guy. <laughs> yeah, like, you Dude. old fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like thirty is like so old to them. It's like in, it's pretty insane. But I think it's just like. It's America. American though. view of like mortality and shit. It's yeah. like everyone has such a weird um perception, I feel like, of death where it's like like you know everyone's gonna die, but you don't fully accept that that's your fate. Which I think is like a weird yeah. it's like I feel like other cultures are better at like understanding and accepting death. And yeah. I feel like American culture is just to like sort of just avoid it. It, yeah, as much as you can, you um, know. You know, like in Mexican culture, death is kind of like revered. Mm-hmm. It's almost like, you know, it's just like part of the game. Yeah, you know, some shit you accept, and as a part of life. And uh, I think that's why Mexicans are so fucking crazy and like wild cowboys because they're just like, well, I'm a fucking die anyway. Yeah, like if for a Mexican, it's like. Worse to be a bitch than to be than to, to, die. to die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a fucking like just be <laughs> down to die than than be a coward, you know. But yeah, fuck yeah. That's, no, <laughs> no, but this is true, tight. man. Well, every time, I mean, I haven't traveled to a lot of countries. I've only gone to Mexico, outside of America. Mm-hmm. But every time I'm in Mexico, the this feeling of constant dread is gone. Mm-hmm. Whereas in America, it's just like this constant fucking stress and stress anxiety. And anxiety. And, yeah. Dude, I was out there and like every fucking day was like, do you want to go swim at the beach? That was that's like, like the that biggest, was the fucking plan. That's the biggest decision you had yeah, to make. Do you want to go swim at the beach? <laughs> do you want mangoes for fucking breakfast? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, not saying that every, because there's major cities in Mexico too. And I'm sure like the people that live in the cities, they live like a f- much more intense life. Yeah. Versus like the, the smaller towns where it's slower. You yeah. just kind of vibe it out. Like you do, like you go to Look work, you do what you got to do. And you figure it out. This is supposed to be a throwback <laughs> of John claude Van Damme. But, um, but no, yeah. And I also just think like other, like cultures like, um, or I mean, it's even like religions, like Buddhism and stuff, like have like way sicker explanations. Yeah. For or what ha- for what happens when you die and shit like that. Yeah. You know? This whole shit where it's like, oh, it's a test, doesn't make any sense. Are you talking about like, like Christianity, oh, especially yeah, Western yeah. Christianity? It's like, yeah, it's like do good in this shithole of a place, and uh, maybe you'll get like. The way to experience some fire shit, whatever heaven is. I come, I come from like a Catholic background, but like I remember reading some some archbishop or no, no, it was mm-hmm. just like some random fucking priest on like Reddit. They were asking him <laughs> random. Yeah, like they were like AMA it was like AMA, AMA priest, yeah, the, the and they were asking him I'm like a priest in the Catholic Church. Ask me anything. They were asking him like, yo, um, what what what's heaven and what's hell? Mm-hmm. And then he was like, hell is. The narrow scope of your own ego. Yeah, and then heaven, heaven is, is the like everlasting a, love of God. Heaven's like a twelve pack of white <laughs> claws. Uh, yeah. you, uh, you always get, you always have the ox cord at all times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? Fucking. Um, it's basically it's Cha Cha Lounge. Nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> that place. That's is like hell. purgatory. Yeah, it's purgatory. That's not hell, man. I want to know what happens in those like six to twelve minutes of brain activity uh, when you die. I don't know. Wasn't it's there a DMT a, trip? Basically, yeah, yeah. Wasn't there a movie like about that? Into the Void. <clears throat> um, I, it's called like some something something grams or whatever. I can't. It's twenty one like grams. Twenty one grams. Yeah, or whatever. I've and never seen it. It's like about, I guess, like because when you die, I guess your you your body loses twenty one grams, and I think they they're th- like I don't know people are like theorizing that that's like your fucking soul or your like <laughs> consciousness or whatever. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Really, I don't fucking know, dude. After I did psychedelics, like my fear of death kind of was alleviated a little bit more, and. But the thing is that it's just like so much shit constantly happening in this world that just mm-hmm. like adds to that level of like fear of death. You know what I mean? More so, I feel like I have a fear of not accomplishing things. Mm-hmm. 
I think I'm okay with that. Wasting time. Yeah, because when you die, it's chill. It's and everyone loves you. Yeah, everyone's put. Everyone gets yeah. gets to post about yeah. how much they loved you on Instagram, yeah. but didn't uh, actually reply or respond to your text. The last five texts yeah. you sent them. <laughs> My favorite shit. Yeah, hey, yeah. If, if anyone, any of the homies out there listening, if you didn't answer my last FaceTime call and I die, you have no right to post. Post. <laughs> I hate. I hate when people post like the no combos. Right. They the, post like a text. Yeah, combo. the text thread of like that shit's weird to me. I don't know. It I'm is always really like, weird. I don't know. I've had like, you know, a few friends that have passed away and it's like i don't know i'm like is this the first time someone in your life has passed away <laughs> like i don't know it's just such an odd way to deal Spats. with it i think you know what i mean yeah I w- not yeah. not hating because i guess everyone everyone has a right to, to deal with it yeah everyone copes differently but i feel like because of social media everybody tries to like yeah. put the shit on parade mm-hmm. like like oh, oh i knew the, this person yeah. that died like hoping like what is that like a grab for like some sort of sympathy from other people, like nah. that people are gonna reach out to you and and tell you sorry for your loss or something. Or what do you think the motivation behind it's, that it's is? It's really weird. I don't know, man. Like social media has warped reality. Yeah, in c- many ways, <clears throat> and I feel like you can you can construct your own narrative on social media of yeah. whatever you like. You know, and uh, you're not gonna post like the shitty aspects of your life to Instagram. Why why would you do that? You're only gonna I, post the most balling shit. Yeah. I post <laughs> I post I post all my dark shit on Twitter. <laughs> do you? I'd be talking about the dark shit in my life on Twitter. That's yeah, where that's I go. Like, that's what I don't mind yeah. doing that kind Twitter of shit. Twitter is, is hell and Instagram's heaven. I don't mind doing that shit because I'm a human being. I feel like people need to understand that like life on earth is ups and downs. Mm-hmm. And the sooner you accept that shit, the more prepared you will be for the for the downs and the ups. Because sometimes you go on the ups, you're not prepared and that shit becomes an L, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? It <laughs> yeah. becomes an L because you're not prepared and you have a bad time on that up. I've been there, you know? Mm-hmm. I've been... I've had bad times in the ups. I've had good times in the downs, man. Yeah. I like that one Jay-Z lyric where he was like, I had more fun when I was piss poor. And I think about that shit because (laughs) low key, the number one shit that I fucking think about when I was most free in my life was Mm -hmm. when I was using public transit. Yeah. When I was on the bus. I mean. And, or not paying ahead. not paying Sorry. on the fucking blue line. Oh, uh, yeah. Just hopping, hopping on. on the fucking train. <laughs> hopping on the train. Yeah, man. I think it's because when you're, when you're broke, dude, you got to use your imagination. And that's honestly like, is the most fun. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> I would just chill with my friends too. Like, literally not do anything, but just sit on a porch. Mm-hmm. And then just like, I didn't have any idea of like this other world where there was other shit going on. Because we were just kind of stuck in this whole little area, you know? So it was just like me and my homies and we'd make weird, sh- like I was, we used to do backyard wrestling and shit. And like you yeah, start yeah. bands, you do you do funny yeah. shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Fools play uh, football on the concrete and shit. Yeah, yeah. So fucking uh, Bobby Schmurda is free now. True. Which is crazy as fuck. Because, dude. Remember, like, this, I don't know, it's probably around when I first met you, like, summer of, what, 2014? Yeah. When he was, like, when Bobby first Schmerz coming out. First out. Yeah. Um, it's fucking insane how much, like, what, he was locked up for seven, eight years? Yeah. Six, maybe? What, what a whirlwind of a life, bro. Imagine you're just, like, some poor fucking dude in, like, Brooklyn, and then you make one song. Mm-hmm. You immediately become like the hottest artist, yeah. In in rap music, and then like then you get fucking re- like Rico. Like a year later, you get Rico'd, and then you have to do fucking set. Like what was it? Like six years in prison? Yeah, it was like it was at least five, six years. I would say. That I guess crazy. probably six now. That uh, shit's fucking crazy. I couldn't even imagine what that shit must feel like. Like imagine you you fucking. All, everything you could think of comes true, and then now, and then next thing you know, you're like in a cell for six years, just kind of mm-hmm. like waiting, waiting. I'm and then, glad. and then he came back out, and now he's like the biggest. His biggest he's the biggest thing right now. Yeah. Like, I don't. We'll see. We'll see. I wonder if he's gonna drop any fire. Yeah, I wonder what. It, I wonder what his <laughs> music's gonna be like. 
It's always kind of weird when people get out of jail after being in jail for like a long time. Remember when Boozy was in jail and like everyone was doing the free Boozy shit and then like nobody cared when we started dropping mm. music. Yeah, it's. I mean, that's an aspect that's fucking weird about people. Like, it's like similar to what we were talking yeah, about with before death with the death. It's yeah. like people they want to know you when you're fucking doing good. Yeah, but they don't. They don't. They want to. Mm. They want to hop on the trend of like support. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and people are so like fickle with that stuff now that nowadays that it's, you know, every week there's a new thing to talk about, a new thing to jump on the the trend of supporting, and then then it's like, did any change really come about from this little like week long thing where <laughs> everyone was interested in that issue yeah. and supporting it, and then everyone kind of just falls off, forgets it, and moves on to the next thing. I mean, this is this is the aspect of social media we keep coming back to. Like, so I feel like social media ultimately is like a fucking bad thing. Like, it's cool because it has cool aspects, but it also yeah. has very horrible aspects. It's definitely like. not. I don't feel like it can't be too good for like your fucking brain, like in Fuck general, no. like yeah. your fucking um, serotonin and sh- like you know, like that. I get, I like feel like I've read an article like <laughs> he just did this yeah because they gamify the shit so we're like yeah it's like you get a ru- a dopamine rush or whatever when someone likes your picture or yeah. some shit like that you know yeah it's and like, then you get addicted to that shit mm-hmm. and then and there's yeah. all this aspect like people for instance like the the social the social justice shit on twitter where people just post and a lot of these people actually don't know what the fuck they're talking about like there are a lot of people that do but there's like people that would just make shit up or just say stupid shit yeah, and then but the and thing people, is, that, people won't even research because yeah. there's like this um, illusion of like if you read it online, yeah, and it's like probably true. Yeah, uh, you know, man, that's, every, that's it's, the crazy shit. There's some shit I read on Twitter sometimes. I just want to throw my fucking phone, dude. That's, it's just so um, much negativity on that's that. That's why shit. I don't. That's why I don't use social it. media in general. It's like it's it start like I know that the, there's just aspects that just like bring out the worst in in humanity. Yeah, because we're just being mean yeah. to one another. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start just being to, mean to strangers on the internet. Is such a weird. It's weird, thing man. To do. It's weird for me because I would never think of being mean to anybody. <laughs> yeah. But also, like, uh, you know, there's repercussions in real life, and then online, there's not as many. You know, you can't yeah. you can't sock somebody. <laughs> you were talking shit. I mean, you could also me. just anonymously post some shit behind like an anime character avatar and. Essentially, say whatever the fuck you want to anybody. Yeah, <laughs> you could just troll people you know in real life from like an anonymous account or something. People are fucking really creative. Yeah, they really, they really are. That's yeah. one cool thing you could about say the about the internet is that there's like lots of cool creative people that like. There's so much funny content out there that's like very creative. You know. Yeah. No, that's true, man. You know, that's something that I learn every day is that people are creative in a lot of different ways, man. Mm-hmm. A lot of different ways. Like gardening is creativity. If you ever think about it, yeah. like people be having like, like fucking the people crazy that ass gardening. Think of the names for, for gas station dick pills. <laughs> that's creativity. For right real, there. man. Dude, Even those gra- the graphics on them are fucking check crazy. Check out this one. Uh, so I was like on tour and we stopped at a random gas station. I want to say like North Carolina or, or some shit like that. And they had these ones called Swag Pills. Swag Pills. It's S dot W dot A dot G. Swag. Uh, and guess what um, the swag stands for? She wants a gentleman. <laughs> no, it stands for sex with a grudge. Damn. And look at the um, artwork for it. That's incredible. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Sex with the grudge. That shit's crazy. It's, it's just like, like stick figures, figures banging, and it yeah. says one to hurt it, two to kill it. What the fuck does that mean? Platinum 280K. I'll put it up on the screen <laughs> for y'all to see later. But um, Fantastic. But yeah, swag pills, that's pretty creative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking, you know, uh, your grandmother crocheting. Is a form of creativity. That is true. I mean, people are creative <laughs> in a lot of different ways. This podcast is actually some of the characters and Im- <laughs> images we've created for you guys is like um, comparable to you know some of the greats, 
such as Picasso. Picasso, yeah. And Michelangelo. Picasso's a fool. He was fully with it. He was doing crazy shit. Is that the fool that was like eating? Was he the one that ate his paint? I don't like, know. Went crazy? I don't know about that shit. <laughs> I just know his shit was many. He started off like, he had so many different eras because he lived in, he lived to like 90. Did he? I so he was so. alive in like the ni- in 1900s and shit? Yeah, I think so. That's fucking cool. He started off in the early 1900s. When the fuck did Picasso die? No one knows. I mean, I could look it up. I don't want to um, look it up. I just want to feel like I don't know, you know? You want to... All right, well, I'm going to look it up, but I'm not going to tell you. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> we'll gonna... keep Picasso's death a secret. I don't want anyone Whoa, to know. Whoa, not what I was expecting, dude. The 80s, huh? 70s. Damn, that's yeah. crazy. He he saw it all. He, all he was almost 100 years, so kind of like... Late-ish, 1800s to like the 70s. That's good. Dude, that must be crazy to live 100 years. Imagine, yeah, that's fucking nuts uh, yeah. to see like, like there were no, I don't, there wasn't cars that long ago, right? Like in the 18... Nah. So like he went from a time when there was like horse-drawn carriages to full-blown like cars and fucking probably what, like probably had no phones and shit back then. Yeah. Yeah, damn, yeah, it's Spanish flu and AIDS. That's so crazy. That's the the mania shit is that he also saw, like, both world wars. Yeah. And, t- and like, TV. And Vietnam. T- and Vietnam, yeah, and TV. <laughs> damn, fool. There's a lot less wars now. The, yeah. Man. Yeah, we got to so, talk about um, that. Fucking the Biden administration. Biden airstrike in Syria. They social justice Syria. Basically... Uh, Joe Biden, he's fucking uh doing a little favor for his Saudi homies. Yeah, in Israel, you feel it's me? crazy because I guess he got some backlash in Congress too. Is that yeah. they were saying that he didn't have any congressional authorization? Well, I mean that's to- just been going on since like fucking George Bush. They said that the fucking vice president Kamala Harris didn't even know what was going on with that shit either. Like a bunch of shit came out after. The thing is that, like, at the end of the day, the military runs the government. You know what I mean? Yeah, for real, though. This is, like, a weird... It's weird that they're so fucking obsessed with, like, Iran. You know what I mean? What is that? What the fuck do they do? I don't understand. Maybe maybe it's because they have all the... Like, they're so tied in with the Saudis Mm -hmm. and with Israel. They got this whole power game in the Middle East has been going on since the 80s. Yeah. But Iran's never, like directly attacked america is it like a geography geography kind of there's issue a, or something like that there's a power game going on between uh like it, it's been going on since the 70s probably since 70s yeah. between saudi arabia and uh, iran saudi arabia wants to be the top dog and have all the influence in mm-hmm. the region but iran like they got so powerful and they, they like created this whole they have this whole plan where instead of like Doing what we do, and we have like bases everywhere. Yeah, they just like put money behind um, popular like revolutions or militias and shit, like Hezbollah. That's like a fucking surrogate of the Iran Iranian state. Yeah, but the thing is, it's like uh, I don't give a fuck. Bro. Like that's between them and fucking Saudi <laughs> Arabia. What the fuck they got to do with me? Why? 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 Why do? We, why we have to bomb fools in Syria? I don't know, dude. Syria's um, been getting fucked up for like fucking 10 years, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That shit's going to go on forever, too. That's another forever war. You know yeah. why? It's so convoluted. Mm-hmm. You should... I, I invite anybody, go on the Wikipedia for the Syrian war and then look at who who's involved. It's the most insane shit ever. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's just fools that just like making up militias and just going out there. That's no one knows who's fighting what. At some point, we were allied with with fucking um, Al Qaeda in Syria. Yeah, I mean that <laughs> That's was crazy. Like, all that. I mean, isn't that what like we were allied with fucking Saddam Hussein? Like, wh- weren't we the ones that put him into power yeah. and shit? And then like, I don't know. It's like sex with a grudge. <laughs> it's like sex with a grudge. Yeah, <laughs> I had I tripped out. I heard this whole podcast series called Blow Blowback on the <laughs> Iraq War, and I had known a lot a lot of this shit, but. There was details that I didn't know, like the fact that like Saddam thought that we were going to hit that fool up and be like, help us out finding the terrorists. He didn't know that the, we were going to flip it on him. 
Yeah. And attack them because uh, up yeah. to that point we were homies. You know what I mean? So I just, yeah. They, Even though we went to war like in like the fucking 90s and shit, it was like, it's some crazy shit. The, the Iraq war and like getting Saddam up out of there was like 20 years in the making. Mm-hmm. It's kind of crazy. These supposed to be playing the but long game. It's crazy game. that it went from like Bush Sr. was the beginning of all that shit, kind of, right? Mm-hmm. At least like the Desert Storm. And then, uh, you know, then it comes around. W. Bush comes into office, and then that's when it concludes. Kind of, a, kind of strange. Yeah. Well, W. Wait, who's W? W is the younger. The, yeah, he's H. W. He's the cooler one. H. Hey, he's the cooler one because he did he did cocaine. <laughs> yeah. And H. Like, H. W. Started the cool fucking. Uh, he did the Iran Contra shit. Mm-hmm. He was the president of the CIA. And then he became yeah, the president that's of the country. The, that shit's crazy, dude. Yeah. Has that ever happened before? No. Nah. It's the first time. Yeah, the CIA has basically been running this country since the 60s, after they assassinated my boy JFK. Mm-hmm. We all know who did it. <laughs> we all, <laughs> we we all, all know who did it. Uh-huh. You might as well come out and say you did it, <laughs> CIA. We know. It's all good. Full I life. wonder when that... When the paperwork on that will be released, it, they I'll released be, it. Uh, it's just all crazy redacted. <laughs> it's or super shit. redacted. <laughs> like there's no fucking details in there. They're like, all right, we'll it's let like it two out. Two words. Yeah. Well, the theory is that it, um, it was not just the CIA, but also the mob. Didn't the Kennedy family have like big mob ties? Yeah, they did. Their dad was a fucking bootlegger. And also the dude, um, they started cracking down on the fucking mob, so the mob fucking whacked. Uh, the mob in conjunction with the CIA because JFK wanted to dismantle the CIA. Like mm-hmm. right off the bat, that's the first shit he wanted to do. He was like, if he got reelected, he was going to dismantle it. Because there's J- no need for it. JFK? Yeah, he was going to dis- He didn't even want to go to fucking um, Vietnam. I might be mistaken, but isn't it illegal for the CIA to like do stuff on American soil? Like technically, yeah. like it's supposed to be like like uh, inner yeah right so like the fact that it operates like on u.s soil is like pretty fucking crazy because don't they do shit all the time here right yeah most of that like gets like covered up and then like exposed later i feel like most of american intelligence is now focused on its own citizens which is fucking crazy like they got that what that what was that shit the nsa they're all the spying and yeah shit. It's crazy how, like, you really can't get away with shit anymore. It's like a hyper surveillance state. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucked up. Yeah, it's fucked. See, this is why if you're a Gen Z, you got to understand, man, we were like 14 when all this shit was going on. Yeah, so yeah. We, this shit kind of like now, upended our lives. Now with your uh, TikTok, yeah. you know, they're fucking listening to you. Yeah. They're, That's they're China. watching you do those little cute little dances china's watching you (laughs) china's watching you do call out posts on tiktok and they're trying they're trying to figure out what the fuck is even going on could you imagine just like some fucking chinese like spy he's just trying to figure out what the fuck any of this bullshit like 14 year olds like do fucking dance little dude dances dances, call out posts and then like that shit where they fucking they like voiceover. They are they lip sync like scenes from movies. Or yeah. Whatever. <laughs> What's that other shit where they'll be like they'll play like the song and it's like some sick ass song and then they like walk away from the song or some shit. I haven't seen that. Where it's like, oh, do you know this old ass fucking song? I like <laughs> the ones where I like I don't know really what there's like. It'll just be like some text and the guy like points up at it. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then it shows like it'll be like cool like five girls that keep me bisexual oh, and shit, then they point yeah. up at it and then it'll be like fucking i don't know by poc i don't know who's hot that fool's a bi poc <laughs> um he's bisexual person of color now nah, speaking of women that <laughs> keep you bisexual <laughs> um <coughs> excuse me <coughs> sorry I have coronavirus. You better not, fool. <laughs> if you did and you coughed, I'll just start firing on you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you would just, I'll just start you swinging. would squabble up. We would squabble up. A fool. A fool. Squabble up. <laughs> Damn, I wish I could find that video again. I can't you find have to like, It's on that one page, yeah. but you have to scroll hella far. Hella far, yeah. I should have recorded it. That's the one cool thing about having an iPhone is you could just record videos and never have to look for them again. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, I was thinking about like Girls Gone Wild commercials back in the day. Horny. And like, uh, remember you could sometimes get the porn channel, but it was like all s- yeah. scrambled up and like maybe like you'd see like, you'd wait, you'd be watching it for a while and like you, then you might see something that might be a nipple. Yeah. And you're excited. You might find a porno magazine in like an empty <laughs> in a lot bush or in something. a bush somewhere. Yeah, yeah. That happened to me before. That's so crazy. That's so kind of gross too. Yeah, because Fools was just jacking off in and like and then just like discarding the fucking His magazine pages and are shit. stuck together and mm. shit and all that. That shit's wild, man. Fools used to live crazy lives before. <laughs> jacking off in bushes. Just like, yeah. Reading like, magazines, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, jacking off to a magazine. Life was raw before. Mm-hmm. It's kind of geek. Uh, I mean, was, it's, it's cool. Life was raw and uncut. Yeah, life was raw and uncut. Kind of like <laughs> Girls Gone Wild. It's insane uh-huh, that yeah, that yeah, shit yeah. was on TV. <laughs> on like Comedy Central, if yeah. you stayed up late enough. They would advertise that shit to you. What the fuck was going on? In that on? song. Do, 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 do. Like the steel drum. Yeah. <laughs> the steel drum. You, that's how you knew it was about to get horny. <laughs> yeah, the steel yeah, drums yeah. came in. <laughs> Wasn't there a bunch of sh- like sus shit that happened after? Like they were doing like crazy shit? Like. Uh, I think it was some, wasn't it like some money laundering shit or something? Or am I tripping? Or drug smuggling or something? I don't know what it was, but also like, I think it was no some- sh- I'm not trying to put oh, shade shit. on uh, the- They were also doing this shit- <laughs> Founders were- of Girls Gone Wild. They were doing this shit where like, weren't they like getting the girls fucked up? Uh, Probably, dude. To do it? Like they were kind of like taking advantage? Well, because wasn't it, wasn't it like at Mardi Gras? Nah, they would do like spring break and uh, like just random parties and shit. Rosarito. Oh. They were just pressed like. All horny. Just yeah. pressed and horny and like fucking. And then what? They give them like 50 bucks to just like show their boobs or something. Yeah. Damn. That shit's dark. Yeah. Girls gone wild. They, they really went wild with that one. I was like the first naked girls I was, remember seeing is like um, the WWF divas, like, <laughs> like when they were in Playboys and That's shit. Funny. Or like remember like when they would play like late at night they would play like Howard Stern. Yeah, he like, would have on, naked chicks on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Howard they, Stern was wild, bro. <laughs> they were, the chicks would be like masturbating on there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. He <laughs> said it's pretty cool. What kind of person listens to Howard Stern? I always was grossed out by Howard Stern. They would do like just like gross, stupid shit. I'm not into shock jock shit. Yeah. Tom Likas. That's the guy. We talked about him before. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to bring him up again. Tom Likas. That's the shit. If you're from Southern California. Kevin and Bean. Kevin and Bean. No, they weren't shock jocks they though. Soar, they like teetered on it, I would say. But I mean like fucking Howard Stern was doing really crazy shit like the, I remember I watched one where they yeah. had a they had a trans woman come out and uh-huh. then show her genitals. She was post op, and I was like, "Whoa, that's fucking wild!" And then they also remember they did I the like thing with they, the dudes with the tiny dicks. Nah, I don't remember, you remember that? that. They had like a I, bunch of dudes with tiny. I dicks find it funny that they were doing all this like visual stuff yeah, on, no a, ra- on a radio yeah. show. Well, I mean, they had it a TV eventually show, came yeah. out on TV because you you could watch it on like E. What was it? E network, man. A lot <laughs> Entertainment of that, network. A lot that of that shit was, would not survive now. It's kind of why I, I hate to be that fucking lame ass guy <laughs> and be like that shit would not survive. But I was just thinking <laughs> about how like they were they were trying to get fucking Joe Rogan off Spotify because he had like that lady that was saying some shit about trans people, but it wasn't even like some. I mean, I guess if you're trans, it's some crazy shit. But her opinion was, I'm not going to repeat. I don't give a fuck, man. Go listen to Joe Rogan. You know what I mean? Do it. You figure it out. But this fool straight up had like a trans woman showing her genitals. Howard Stern. What the fuck was going on in the 90s, man? No one gave a fuck. No one gave a fuck. It was all this money. (laughs) Money was just pouring in, bro. Yeah, yeah. And you could really just like do Whatever you fucking... You could start a fucking mediocre band, like an independent band, or become an ind- independent rapper and probably make like 30 grand a year, 40 grand a year. Yeah, like somehow just like selling your CDs. Yeah, selling your CDs, touring. Like fucking... Some fools are even like making millions, you know? Mm-hmm. Like and then Independently. And then if you're like a major band, bro, Limp Biscuit sold like 50 million records. It was 50 million CDs. Yeah, that's... Shit. That's insane, dog. That's the numbers people were doing back then, it's like shit that could never like... 
Oh yeah, it'll like, never happen again. The numbers like don't even like get anywhere near that. It's like if you can sell like, I feel like it's like if you could sell like thirty k records in a week, like that's fucking like insane now. Yeah, Napster pretty that's much like fucked num- everything. That's like number one. Napster that's like a fucked number everything. One album. Peer to peer shit, yeah. Peer to peer file sharing fucked everything up. They should have listened to. Um, and streaming has just made shit even worse. They should have listened to Lars Ulrich. Yeah, I mean, respect to Lars Ulrich, man. Everybody was hating <laughs> on him about but his bread, though. I had I had a different point of view when I was younger, but now I kind of realize, like, when you when you see the behind the scenes of the business and how much fucking well, Metallica's already rich as fuck. Actually, he's a fucking asshole for that. Because yeah, it's like, these are that. old CDs that they've already put out. You know what I mean? Yeah, who the fuck cares? Yeah. If you're already rich, dude. Yeah. But the thing is that people carry that mentality towards independent artists, mm-hmm. too. Yeah, and then yeah, they yeah. have this, like, fucking weird... This is what I don't like about what happened with uh, peer-to-peer file sharing and then later streaming is, like, people become so entitled. Yeah. They just like, want you to constantly be putting right, content out. Where's the tri- album? Where's the album? For free, too. Yeah. Where's the album? Where's the album? It's like, dude, you're not even buying the fucking album. Yeah. Or supporting anything. Or supporting any or fucking You don't artist. even fucking like repost yeah. nobody's shit or anything. Like, I don't know. It's like things have become so accessible that now it, anyone can make music or. I mean, there's different routes now, but it's it's definitely. I don't know. They got to figure out that streaming shit because people aren't making shit off that. And like the streaming companies are the ones that are making out with most of bread and, and the, the record labels. labels. Yeah. yeah, they get the biggest cut, which mm. is funny because it's like they're not actually doing anything anymore. It used to be you would give the label like a fat cut of what whatever you made because they would do like promotion. Mm-hmm. They would manufacture the CDs. They would fucking distribute it. You know what I mean? Like there was this whole fucking um supply chain yeah is that what it's called yeah they the don't logistics. have to do much now it's they like, don't do nothing uh, it's yeah, uploaded I, I, yeah and then they'll like maybe like pay someone i, I really am not a big fan of tiktok so I, sorry to <laughs> be such a hater but but yeah they'll maybe pay like some fucking tiktok celebrities to like make a little dance to your song or whatever and that's like your best bet yeah these days yeah, yeah, they're they. It's I don't know. It's dark. <laughs> it is pretty dark. When you think about it, like how frivolous music is, but like people absolutely need it, you mm-hmm. know, or absolutely want it. But but like the people making the music aren't aren't making jack shit. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and people expect all this shit from you. It's like for free too. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. And they and then the the way the social media is set up, you have to be this like you can't just be an artist now. Now you have to be like a social media personality too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's you, uh, your whole life lame, has to bro. be um, yeah. online pretty much. Yeah, otherwise you're not going to be successful. It's pretty shitty. It's sad. Yeah. I think I'm going to fucking, like, I think I'm going to keep doing creative work f- for the rest of my life, but eventually I'm going to start weaning off of it and do other shit where <laughs> I don't have to fucking use social media. That's the number one thing that I hate about that shit is social media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. required. It's a yeah. requirement. No. It fucks with my life, man. Cause a lot of problems for no reason, you know? I feel like when I'm not on social media, I feel like way happier. Yeah. Not looking at any of that bullshit. Yeah, it makes you want to fucking, you know, put on that fedora and uh, <laughs> and relive your ska years, you know? When yeah. when uh, there wasn't a worry in the world, all you, all you uh, had to worry about was uh, what time is Real Big Fish playing at the World <laughs> Tour. <laughs> do fools do fools really like ska? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Well, no, let me tell you the truth. Actually, I like pirate metal. You ever seen pirate metal? Mm-hmm. <laughs> fools in fools in yeah. LA hella love ska. There's like a whole underground. Yeah, fucking, it's definitely is. Like the backyard gigs back in the day were either like, all right, you're either going to a crust punk show or a grindcore show, or you're going to like a ska. street punk slash ska show. You know what I mean? It was always some shit like that. It'd be like a casualties ripoff band, and then it'd be like a straight up like third wave ska band. <laughs> and that band had the sickest pit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People in LA really fucking love ska. I don't get it. Yeah, I wonder. And that's sad to say. I wonder but. if that's the thing too. It's like there's like in Mexican music, there's a lot of brass instruments and like that makes I, sense. I knew some some Mexican kids that loved their ska. Yeah, it's big in Mexico too. 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I feel like every aren't like most countercultures big in Mexico though. Yeah, Mexico's kind of like Japan. Didn't they have like the emo wars? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. All the other fools weren't fucking with the emos, and they were like fucking them up. Like the metalheads, the goths, and the punks all banded together <laughs> to fucking <laughs> to harass fuck. the fucking emos because they felt that they were like a fake culture. Which in reality, so it kind of is, man. It, it was like some fake culture. It's not a real subculture. Um, it's just a genre of music. Yeah. I think it's like very like, yeah, I don't know. But it sucks because actually emo is punk. It's just another branch of punk. Kind of. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what it comes well, from. Well, where it came from, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it came from hardcore, I would say, probably, which I mean, came from punk. Yeah. So it's like a whole. That's pretty much like everything, but it's like branches of a tree <laughs> to each their own i just understand why they were beating each other up so funny, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the so funny. Wars. they were they were marching bro there was like a march there was like a giant they march like and then the all fucking, like uh wearing like fucking yeah. seven jeans with their hair to the side and they're yeah. like uh with like eye- eyeliner they were like we're tired of being harassed and then like fools the metalhead fools and the punk fools showed up and started fist fighting them <laughs> they were like, no, no emos. Why were they beefing? They just didn't like their They swag. just didn't fuck with them. It's so weird because, like, I don't think I've ever in my years of being in subcultures been like, I'm going to go fight some fool from another subculture because <laughs> I don't fuck with that shit. But that shit's real out there, man. Like, they take that shit very seriously. Like, the subcultures. It's like, yeah. it's like Japan. Just the Mexicans are very violent. So, mm-hmm. like, they like to fist fight and then also are very passionate at the same time. So fools are just like arguing and shit. Mexico's wild, bro, because when I went to Mexico City, I really realized how how deeply entrenched subcultures are out there because they got like those crazy goth bars. Mm-hmm. We went to the shit. It was called El Under, and it was like three stories. Yeah. And it was all goth, like crazy goth. And then, But down the street, there was like a skinhead bar and shit. Was it like each floor was like a different type of goth? Yeah, like the first floor was like just a bar. Industrial goth. The first floor was just a bar and they were playing kind of like random, like death rock kind of shit. And then the second floor was like 80s. Swag. So like the cure and all that shit. And then like the top floor was the fucking do, do, do. You know what I mean? Like the techno goth kind of shit. Yeah. Industrial. I don't know, cyber goth, industrial. It was wild, though. I had a good time there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I've talked about most of the shit I had in my notes. I didn't have any funny characters this week. Sorry, guys. But I, yeah. did, I found out that um, I guess someone had already thought of Larry David Lynch. Yeah. Already, <laughs> and I found there's an entire uh, uh, Instagram Seinfeld Twin Peaks page on Instagram. And I was... <laughs> I don't know how it got, I guess, maybe from me saying Larry David Lynch a bunch of times. Yeah. It came up on my Explore page, and I was like, fuck, I'm I'm not as funny as I thought I was, I guess. But um, I, I liked Kodak Tommy Lee a lot. That one's, I definitely made that one up. Which one? Kodak what? Kodak Tommy Lee. Kodak Tommy Lee, yeah. <laughs> the funniness will come back, guys. We're just, uh, we kind of overdid it. With the uh, with the podcast juice, hang in there, guys. Yeah, um, it's cool to talk about serious things too, though. Sometimes, yeah, it's, we got to find a nice little balance. Little balance here. Yeah. I mean, we talked about some dumb shit. Yeah, we did. Girl, girl, girls gone wild. <laughs> what about guys gone wild? <laughs> <laughs> what do, would they do? Just whip do their we, dick out? Yeah, when do we get to go wild? Yeah. Fellas, am I right? Yeah, am I right, fellas? <laughs> when when, do, when, <laughs> put, put the old fucking. Uh, the I'm old gonna, walnuts on display. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get one of those like little fucking speedos with like the elef- like your dick goes in the elephant nose. Fools in the you know 80s were fucking about? wild because they were just rocking speedos. Yeah, or <laughs> like that. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Guys gone wild. I, yeah, and I would rock, rock like <laughs> you know when fools just rock like the speedo with like a uh, like the little. It's just the collar from the shirt with a bow tie. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just the. Just the tuxedo collar, yeah, <laughs> with the little bow tie. That's some horny as shit. Dude. That's some really male horny strippers. Shit. Literally, like the I feel like the like uh, the clothes they have to wear or not have to, but it's really silly. <laughs> it's like funny shit. Dude. Male male strippers are the fedoras of the stripping world. Mm, I wonder uh, what do they? I have, just came to that conclusion. Do they have like male stripper stores? Like you know how there's like yeah. stripper 
regular or <laughs> not regular. I don't know. Stripper supplies. It's like stripper supply stores. What do you What do you think it's like being a Chippendale dancer? I don't know, dude. It could be. No. <laughs> Why would I ever? <laughs> oh wait, I have. I'm that night that I went out with you to the shit. I walked into the other room. I so I have seen male strippers actually. Yeah. This fool used to work at a fucking strip. It was in a strip club. It was a strip club sometimes, but it was a gay. It was a gay club and a lesbian club. Mm-hmm. And then one side was a lesbian club, which was just straight up like aggressive rap music. And then the the gay part was like crazy fucking house music and like just fools and like speedos and shit. It was such a crazy vibe to walk from like one to the other. Yeah, that's so cool. It's like yeah. the yin and yang. Yeah, of, because the, the lesbians were just like of horniness turning up to like YG. It's <laughs> and then you walk over there and it's just like tropical vibes and shit. There's like fake trees everywhere and it's like dudes and boom, boom, and boom. And it's just dudes and speedos dancing and shit. I'll be in there getting drinks paid for all night, man. Gay clubs rock, dude. <laughs> gay gay bars and gay clubs are like the shit, dude. Yeah, me and me and Ned went out in it was like a right when we first met and we didn't really know what we were doing. So <laughs> we just we were at the Troubadour at a show and we just hit the town. Didn't we didn't know like much about West Hollywood, but uh, mm. we had some fun. <laughs> we had some fun out there. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. I think we went to see fucking uh, that fool in Lee fucking Intuition. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. With Murs or some shit. Murs. Remember Murs? Yeah, he's a shit. Backpack rap was. I love that. It era. was a moment. I love that era. It was a moment. Who? He seems chill. He seems super chill. Uber chill. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> it seems uber. We should start calling shit. Uber. It was. It was cool and weird. I don't know. I look back on it like kind of fondly, of but what? also like not not as fondly. Era? Yeah. A lot of it kind of sucks. Like if you go back and listen to some of it, it kind of mm-hmm. sucks. I know what you mean. Yeah. So the shit it. that was fire was like the the, the Detroit beats, shit. The beats though were what, nah, I, what the, that's what I liked yeah. the most about the music. I the really Detroit liked, shit. Like what? Jay Dilla. Oh yeah, of course. Guilty Simpson. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. that shit. Yeah. I'm talking about like all the other weird shit that came out of L.A. Slum and New York. Village, bro. Yeah. I mean, I like it. Like I still bump it. I'm not gonna say that it sucks. But like uh, it, it, it teeter totters. It's either like way too abstract and weird. It didn't, it, or it's way too aggressive. Like either you're either Necro or you're Sage Francis. You know what I mean? Cannibal Ox. Yeah. Remember Cannibal Ox? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it was so cool. It was what cool was, at the time. What was the one Jedi mind tricks? Yeah. <laughs> I remember that shit. <laughs> they were sick. <laughs> they were sick. We opened me, me and Jeff opened for Jedi mind tricks once at the Whoa. fucking glass house. Oh yeah, and I forgot sick. my lyrics, or I fucked up one of the songs, and then they booed us. <laughs> and then, <laughs> that shit was wild. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, so like to make up for it, the next song I was like, I can't. Fuck you went this crazy, song. and I went crazy as fuck. Fool, and did you win them back? First off, let me just talk about how we came out. <laughs> we we came out with waving the American flag and playing what we we're playing, real American. Were we or no? What, what the fuck the were we playing? Hulk Hogan song? We played like a or the Macho Man song oh, or is some that what shit. It is? I don't remember the what it was. There's like a, a video of it, but like American. we came out, we came out waving the flag, and then I got on the fucking mic and I was like, Hulk Hogan is a bopping bitch. I don't know what was going through my head back in those days, but <laughs> you were tripping, dude. I was tripping for sure. <laughs> <laughs> came That's, out talking shit about Hulk Hogan. All these like so random. <laughs> the whole crowd was just like tag bangers and shit. So those fools were all weirded out. Like we were rocking like hella tight ass pants and shit yeah yeah. because it was right in 2011 so it was cool to rock tight ass pants Mm -hmm, of course and then just like neon colors and shit and then i don't think they were really fucking with us but then we we started playing more because some of our songs more like trapped out Mm -hmm. and then we did we the second half of the set was like the hip-hop sample shit and they were fucking with that and then they, they clap for me and shit. So, <laughs> so like, literally from one song so, to the yeah, next. The moral of the story, kids, is, you know, play to your audience. Yeah, for real. <laughs> for real. Don't cater if, to your audience. Cater to your audience. That was a big <laughs> lesson for me, man. I was like, shit, fool. I know what these fools are going to. I know what it is. But here's the thing. That shit was exciting, man. 
Yeah. Getting booed was cool. I felt like a super villain. Yeah. You should have just went you should have just went crazy, just started like talking shit on them. Oh hell yeah. Started like some crazy like altercation. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's what I was like—a heel turn, <laughs> do a heel turn on, on stage. Isn't it crazy that they booed me because I fucked up the lyrics? So that's some real hip hop shit. Yeah. How did you? I fuck felt like I was in Eight Mile. In what way? Yeah, right. <laughs> in what way did you fuck up? Well, you know where that shit where you're rapping and then it's like on Guitar Hero when you fuck up. You start the chorus, fucking up. And then it's like, <laughs> like boo, yeah. and then it's like boo. Oh yeah, they start booing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's exactly how it was. I, I was rapping and then I, I forgot the lyrics and I started mumbling. And as soon as I started mumbling, they started booing. It was so crazy. I they was like, like no. they didn't even know the song. They just you knew that I was it. fucking up. Did they were like, boo. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, cut the song, cut the song. And I was like, all right, fuck that shit. Did blah, you blah, blah, blah. Did you I'm like, we're, we're about to go in. I, I did because I was like, like, all right, fuck bad. that shit. <laughs> Not to say my bad. I would never say my bad, fool. I was just going harder. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta be. I was right. just like, we're gonna play some real hip hop shit. Real men. I think I might have even actually said that too. Real men don't. We're gonna apologize. play some real hip hop shit. Real men don't apologize for their mistakes. They don't. And so yeah, you're man. being a real man at, yeah. the, at that moment. Yeah, real men don't apologize. They just act like nothing happened. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You just gotta keep going. <laughs> it's gotta keep going hard. Yeah, man. from one day to the next, it's just like, <laughs> all right. So you're not gonna apologize? He was like, no, nope. It's not what men do. Mm, it's what not. I don't even know. What the, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, just, What's your favorite part of male culture? Male culture. Uh, my favorite part about male culture is having like a really nice um, cooler. Cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's good. The coolers that have like the fucking beer. Fucking, you could put the beers on top uh -huh. of the crew. You have know you what I mean? Seen, like the cup have holder. you seen the new ones though? I was like totally unaware of this, but uh, me and the homie were we went to Dick's, the sporting goods store. I fucking love Dick's. We were in there and Pause. he pointed this shit out to me. <laughs> they, there's these new coolers that came out called the Yeti. Have yeah, you seen the those? Yetis are I don't crazy. know if they're new or not. I just found. I guess they're like kind of like the popping thing, like. It's like if you're going to the fucking lake and you don't have a fucking Yeti, you're a fucking bitch. <laughs> Apparently. Um, but yeah, they're just super badass coolers. That's probably my favorite part about male culture. What about you? Fist fighting. <laughs> fist fighting. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Nothing like a good fist fight. <laughs> yeah. Cooler. Yeah. Yeah. Coolers. What about getting in a fist fight over your cooler? Over your cooler <laughs> shit, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like some, really? if, someone, if someone sees you with your Yeti cooler yeah. and they don't compliment it, then you throw hands. Grilling is also <laughs> a very important part of male culture. Yeah, I wish I could participate. You can. You just I guess I can just grill up some veggies and like yeah. some. It's not the same though. Some when Beyond you, Burgers. There's an there's a art to grilling meat. You know what I mean? My favorite aspect of male culture is eventually we all become like the fucking flip flop sandal guy. That just yeah, like I'm already chills. Come on, I'm the Crocs guy now. <laughs> the older I get, the bummier I dress. It's cool. That's like what's that's like the phase I'm going through right now. Yeah. It's like I I sold all my designer shit on yeah. Depop. I don't wear skinny jeans anymore. I just wear fucking five oh ones. You start caring less. You know what I mean. Like you don't uh, have to fucking I, impress anybody anymore. I actually just like was realizing how much fucking money I straight up wasted on designer on clothes. designer clothes. Yeah, like for no why for what? You know when you when you do something and it makes you not want to do it. You know what I mean? Like like when you when you work in clothes, you don't want to buy clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just like dress. <laughs> that's where that's yeah. where I'm at. You know? Yeah, it's like I have a clothing company. On it. You're just like wearing yeah. the, <laughs> you're wearing wearing the shit. shirt. <laughs> yeah, I'm only wearing this shit because I woke up all hung over and was like, fuck. It was the first shirt I saw <laughs> and I put it on. But, dude, it's it's fucking crazy because like when I, when I was a game tester, I fucking hated video games. I never wanted to fucking play them. And I love video games, bro. Yeah. Nah, when I, I stopped fucking being a tester, I started enjoying video games again. So I like, mean, dude, like that's like with me and fucking making music, dude. Yeah. Like once it you became like it. my actual job, which is what I fucking always wanted. Now, it, now it's like it's like not as enjoyable anymore. Yeah, so, which is sad to say. Yeah, uh, it comes and goes for me though with like my like inspiration and passion for it, but. Um, 
This is uh this is the thing about fucking life is that everything is a struggle. <laughs> and it goes back and forth. I just kind of like Yeah. You know, going back to what I said earlier, once you once you accept that shit, it becomes easier to brace yourself. Yeah, well, fucking <laughs> thanks for listening. Thanks for Once listening. Again, we if you we made ended it this, so up roughly. If you made it this far, man, I, I appreciate that. Um, like I said earlier, hit up patreon.com slash planet dumb. We appreciate any support you guys give us. So thanks for listening. Thank Peace you. out. Peaceful. <laughs>